Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we've got one of the highly requested videos, what cryptos would I buy with $1,000? Now before you get too ahead of yourselves, these aren't the cryptos that I would be buying in total. So I just want to go through a few things before we get to that stage, because I've had a look around the internet, looked at a whole lot of these other videos, what cryptos would I buy with $1,000? And I want to try and add something extra to the mix that I didn't see out there. Now, if you've been following the channel for some time, you know I base a lot of what I do on technical analysis. But the other thing that comes with trading and investing is mindset. So it's a lot to do with investor psychology. And that's why I want to pose a few questions to you before we get started. So if that's not something you're interested in and you just want, tell me which coins there are, you can skip ahead to the video, but I highly suggest watching the beginning part and at least taking the questions for yourself and doing them in your own time. This is going to develop your skills as a trader and investor. And if that's what you want to do and you want to get some more money, get really successful at this long term, then you should look at understanding your own investor psychology. So with that intro said, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you want to subscribe for more content around cryptocurrency investing and understanding our investor psychology. Be sure to hit the like button as well. It goes a long way to supporting the channel down below if you find some value from the video. And if you want to stay up to date with me, uh, hit me in Instagram. We look at Q and A's on the daily and also my retirement fund portfolio. So let's dive into today's video. What cryptos would I be buying with $1,000? Let's start with the first question here. How much time do you have to check and trade the markets? That's really gonna come down to how you develop the portfolio. See, I could give you three coins to go and do, but if you don't have much time to go and check the markets, then these coins could go to crap in the next week or the next month or the next year and you just don't look at the market. So really consider how much time do you have to check and trade the markets. Next is how much time do I actually want to commit to my investments? If you just want to buy something and hold it forever, then your portfolio is going to be made up a hell of a lot differently to someone who wants to trade their portfolio for swings. So how much time do you actually want to commit to your investments? Do you want to do it on a weekly basis? a daily basis. I'm just giving you some examples to go away and think about because you've never, if you've never thought about this stuff before, then you're going to probably wonder, well, where do I start? Should I be looking at it on the daily, on the weekly, on the monthly? How often do I look at my portfolio? So there are many different ways to do it. And it's going to come down to you. Do you have a full-time job? What's going on? Like who, who do you have to look after at home? Do you have other outside commitments? So really take some time to think about that. How much experience do you have with swing trading markets? That's going to also play into how much time can you commit. If you've got no experience swing trading, then you're going to have to commit some time to understanding how to trade. You're going to have to understand fundamentals, technicals, market sentiment. So look at your experience to this point and then that is going to determine which cryptos we look at in a moment to decide which ones you want to put into your own portfolio. That's why I do a lot of this when it comes to asking ourselves questions so that I'm hopefully teaching you how to fish as opposed to giving you fish. Now, if you're looking for a channel to give you fish, you've come to the wrong place. But if you want to know how to fish, you're definitely at the right place. There's a subscribe button. So how much experience do you have with swing trading markets? We're going to go through a couple of different ideas when it comes to our setting up our portfolio for $1,000. Have I been successful? Am I confident in my success? Now, this isn't how confident you are in typing a comment down below to the video and just mooning a coin. This is how confident in your own success, the stuff that people don't see. People aren't going to see your portfolios. Even if you say, I bought Cardano at five cents and you sold it at $1.50, like no one really sees that. They might see a comment and that's about it. This is about being honest with yourself. It doesn't matter. No one needs to give a shit about what it is that you have accomplished just matters what you can do and how you're going to move forward with that. I might quickly add in as well, this is a $1,000 portfolio. It can be a $10,000 portfolio, but there's going to be slight differences between how much money we have and then how many coins we have as well. So we can do this. If you're clicking onto it, you've got $5,000, $2,500, $10,000. We will talk about that when we get to the point of how many cryptos should I have and which ones. All right, so have I been successful? Go back and look at all of your trades or all of your investments 
Are they really successful? Just also look at the ones that you have sold out, not the ones that you're holding and are down 60% or 90%. Look at the stuff that you've actually taken some gains on. Be honest with yourself. So really consider those questions. Uh, what, type are, what type of investor are you? Risk on, risk off. Everyone on the internet thinks that they're risk on. It's just, yep, throw down two grand, 10 grand. I put 20 grand on some crap, some shit coin like Doge and you know now it's down 50%. So there's a huge difference to what you see in the comment sections, to what people talk about online, to what uh, results you're actually getting. So that's another piece of the investor puzzle to understand the portfolio. Now we're picking your strategy. So the questions I've just posed at the top there are by no means a limited example there. You, you have many other questions to consider. However, these are the first ones that came to mind when I consider how I would set up a portfolio starting with a thousand bucks, five thousand, ten thousand dollars. You know, there's, there's a few little differences there. So they're the main questions that I would ask. If you have other questions that you would ask yourself, leave them down below or join me on Instagram and ask in the Q&A section. I put up a Q&A on Instagram stories. You just go and ask your question there and I answer it on Instagram stories. Strategies, buy and hold, longer, safer, maybe. So this means like we're we just buying and holding Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's gonna take us a lot longer to get to our targets, but we think it should be a lot safer considering these coins have been around a lot longer, they have larger market caps, there is more trust in them. One more question we need to add in at the top is, what is our end goal? That's pretty straightforward and it's a pretty big one because that's gonna determine whether you want to be a buy and hold or want to be a swing trader and whether you're gonna to have to try and fit into that position. What is your end goal? Are you just trying to go from a thousand bucks to $10,000? or $1,000 to a $1 million. $1,000 to 10,000, pretty easy buy and hold. $1,000 to a $1 million, you're gonna to have to be a legendary swing trader to get there. So this is quicker, but a lot riskier because then you have to spread out how, uh, you have to spread out your capital across different cryptos. And if those cryptos fail, like altcoins down the list, way down the crypto uh, coin market cap list that are, $10 million market cap or $20 million market cap. If those fail, then you've lost a chunk of that $1,000. So it's it's a lot harder to get started with that. And if you're only putting 200 bucks into these things, you need them to go 10 or 50 X from those low points to make a solid gain and to make up for any losses that you have on that $1,000. So you may put 200 bucks into five different shit coins that are way down on the coin market cap list four of them fail or don't really go anywhere, one does really well and does a 10x, you basically got two grand, so you've only doubled your money. These are all the mathematics behind understanding your portfolio and what it is you actually want to achieve. What is your end goal? Swing trading, like I said, riskier, can be quicker if you know what you're doing and if you can understand that maths behind your money management and risk management. So weigh those up go back over the questions and ask those questions again. So here's a quick one. I'll probably go into another video on, is it possible to find a thousand X's? So this would be going from a thousand dollars to a million dollars. 2017, I found that there were lots. 2021, there of course is still a lot that can do a thousand X and we've seen a lot of coins do a thousand X. This is not a thousand percent. This is a thousand X, all right, which is, I have to do my maths again. It's a hundred thousand percent. Someone tell me in in the comments. It's a, it's a huge gain from where it is there. Twenty twenty one. So much more difficult because just the simple reason is that there are so many more coins out there. There's over eight thousand cryptocurrencies now. Whereas in twenty seventeen, I remember the market uh, the market cap showing about twelve hundred, then seventeen hundred coins, and it was a lot easier to pick these things. And some of the big projects could be found a lot easier. There was Ant shares, which ended up turning into NEO. There was Stratus. There was, of course, Ethereum, which was 2015. But NEO and Stratus were some of the big ones from 2017 that did more than those thousand Xs uh, pretty quickly. So you could turn your money into a million very, very quickly. So finding a thousand X covered there, it's 
it's pretty difficult in this environment. Not that it can't be done and not that you can't turn something into a million dollars, but you're gonna then gonna have to go back to this question is how much time do you actually wanna to commit to this? You have to commit a lot of time to finding these projects and then studying the market, learning to trade, then flipping these coins. So it definitely can be done. Uh, it, it just depends which base you're starting from. So how else can you be a crypto millionaire if that's your end goal? Of course there is leverage trading, but again, we go back, how much time do you have? How much experience do you have? How successful have you already been? What type of investor are you? Do you want to be this investor that can be a crypto millionaire? I, I assume many of you will probably say yes. And if you're not starting with a huge base, then you'll have to go back, study trading, study money management, and fundamentals of these small cap projects and be able to have a checklist that you can go through and cross them off as you go through the coin market cap list of all of these shit coins. So a lot of time will be needed for that. All right, we're getting closer to the juicier part that everyone's asking, which coins should it be? I'll ask you if you have found value from the video so far, hit the like button down below. Let's see if we can get the video to 2000 likes. It goes a long way to helping the channel and it's a free, easy way to support us. Should we dollar cost average into the thousand dollar position? I think it's probably better to buy the dip. Reason being, we have to assume a few things now. And from the questions that I have received on Instagram, the comments that have come through uh, in the comment section of the video, I put a lot of polls on Instagram as well. I understand a lot of people are pretty much just starting with about a thousand to ten thousand dollars and a lot of people are new so they don't have experience in investing they don't have trading experience some may have some minor experience but i have to assume a few things in order to make this first portfolio up so how many cryptos should i hold we're starting out we want to be a buy and hold because we don't have experience in trading we don't have experience in fundamental research we don't have much time because we're still at our day jobs and we only really have time after work and the last thing we want to do is then go and do a whole lot more work we've got families or friends or anything else buy and hold this is going to be completely boring and you might even switch off from here i would literally just say bitcoin ethereum now that is a cop out i i get it but at the same time it's what i'm doing with my retirement fund this is the safest you could be with cryptocurrencies. You can check it out on my Instagram, my retirement fund, Bitcoin, Ethereum, 50-50. I think Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin in the short term. Long term, I'm not sure yet. So that's why I still have about 50% uh, Bitcoin. So I think Ethereum will take off. Probably Ethereum will have bigger drops than Bitcoin and then we'll continue to level out. That's a simple buy and hold. You don't want to know anything else. You're not interested in investing. You've just heard the word at work and you need to get in because you want to be part of the action. That's what I would do if I have no other experience. I have no experience from 2017 in a bull market, a bear market. I have no trading. Well, I don't have my 11 years of trading experience that I started in 2010. So that's pretty much where it would sit for me. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit riskier, I would add in one of these tokens here. This is a late entrance. Uh, so I would probably look more to the top of the top 10 of the coin market caps. I've got Cardano, Polkadot, Chainlink, Binance. Engine is a nice gamble because it uh, gets into the space of the NFTs and DeFi and uh, it's still a reasonably low market cap. At the time of this video, it's about 490 million, call it 500 million, so half a billion dollar market cap. So that could give me an extra edge to gain a whole lot more because I think it has very big potential. So the way I would look at it here is, okay, Bitcoin I can research so that I understand my own investments. Ethereum I can research, has a lot of information out about these two. Engine I can go and research too. So I don't have a lot of time, one, two, three easy done. How I would split that up with my thousand, I would look at a third, a third, a third. Why? Because this will keep my portfolio stable. This, I believe because I've done my research and I can see the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. I've been watching the channel. I understand trading against different alts to increase my value. Uh, I think Ethereum's got a bit more promise against Bitcoin in the this bull market to get some gains. So that's why I'm throwing Ethereum in there to increase my risk, but also my reward. Then I would throw Engine in there as well. And I'm throwing such a large position 
comparatively looking at uh, comparatively speaking with Bitcoin and Ethereum because I want to see if I can get those extra gains and I have the stability with Bitcoin in the portfolio to hold me steady in case engine doesn't do what I think it's going to do. So that's strategy number one. Now, if you've got $10,000, obviously just add a zero to all of these. So you're putting in 3,300, 3,350, $3,350 to engine. Now, of course, you're going to have to take into consideration some of the transfer fees and basically transferring these onto a safe wallet or a centralized wallet to be able to earn interest on those. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. I'll also make one other mention to this easy portfolio. That's why I'm looking at it because there's only three. You don't want to have the number of coins spread out too far because if you're going to make some gains, you want to have as much in those as possible to make the gains. If you spread it across 10 different cryptos with only $1,000, you have $100 in each of these things. If they double, you're, you've only made $100. And if one doesn't double, then you're sort of down again. So the risk and the money management in this smaller end of the portfolios of a thousand bucks is you've got to, well, my opinion is we have to take the risk when it comes to the cryptocurrencies. We've got to take the risk into it with just a few. We don't want to spread ourselves thin because you, you're just not going to get anywhere. I see a lot of people say, I've got 20 bucks, I've got 50 bucks. I don't know if they're trolling me, but if they've got 50 bucks and you're just throwing it into one of these, I mean, even if it does 20x, you've only made a thousand dollars. It I mean, you've made up to a thousand dollars. It doesn't even matter. It's not. It's not life-changing money. It might be for you, but I think we're all here for a little more than a nine hundred and fifty dollar gain off a, of a fifty dollar bet. If you want fifty dollar bets, you got lottery tickets. You got gambling on horses or whatever else it is. Cryptocurrency. You can stack the odds in your favor. Number two, I would probably switch engine for one of these top cryptos. Link. Binance, DOT, or ADA. I'll keep it as simple as that. If you don't want to take the risk where this one's a half a billion dollar market cap and these guys are $40 billion market caps, then this is a lower risk strategy. Put the 3,350 into Cardano, DOT, LINK, or Binance. So not all of them, just one of them. Which ones would I pick? I have a smart contract here. ADA is a smart contract. DOT's a smart contract. Binance is a smart contract. LINK is an oracle. So you could take the Oracle route and go with Link or one of these other smart contract platforms so that you could hedge your risk against Ethereum. I'm going to go with DOT. We've talked about Cardano a hell of a lot on the channel. I'm just going to say DOT on here. So that is number two. So they're the low risk strategies without much time. It's a pretty easy strategy. Now let's look at something that's higher risk, but we're going to need a little more than a thousand bucks, probably 5,000 to 10,000. You could try it with a thousand, but like I said earlier, I think we're spreading the risk too far across too many cryptocurrencies for such a low amount of money. So let's have a look, 5,000 to 10,000. Before we crack on with the last portfolio, let's take a quick look at Litten Tree. Litten Tree is L-I-T, got to understand what this is or have just a rough idea and we can talk about it in later videos. Essentially, we've seen a small peak here, $13, $14 and we've come back down to around 7 bucks, so about 50% off. That sounds good to me, we're starting to head down. The other thing I want to look at is the market cap. So the market cap is $129 million, fully diluted, $707 million. We're going with the market cap here because this is all the coins that are out at the moment. We'll get into the other specifics of it uh, in another video. It's beyond the scope at the moment. The, th the other thing I want to look at here is that it's easy to buy. It's on Binance, so everyone can access Binance. And if you want to get onto Binance, I have a link in the description down below that you can sign up and get 10% off your trading fees using that link. The other thing I want to look at here is what it is. Decentralized identity authentication and user activity data management infrastructure. A lot of big words. The main thing I'm concerned with is build on substrate ready for polka dot so they are buzzwords at the moment and this thing seems to be doing pretty well it's holding itself up good market cap but not too high and it has a decent use case so with that out of the way let's move across to the portfolio our ten thousand dollar portfolio or five thousand dollar portfolio is looking like bitcoin ethereum cardano polka dot link engine lit entry i'm just going to call it lit and then I have a thousand bucks left and I want to choose between Binance, Uni or CRO. And the CRO is probably the riskiest out of these three in my opinion. However, I think they have a big chance to move up quickly 
and also gain a lot more market share. They do a lot of things that Binance is doing, but obviously Binance is the major leader here and they look like they're getting into the decentralized exchanges space as well. So that's uni. So I'm going to put my thousand bucks with CRO, but I'm assuming I have a little more time to understand the markets. Just a little more time here. I've got, got $10,000. I'm not going to be lazy and not do anything with my investments. So I've got a thousand in Bitcoin, 1500 Ethereum, 1500 ADA, 1500 DOT. These are all sort of hedges against each other and they're moving pretty well. Link is the Oracle in these. Engine, like we talked about earlier, I like that as a, a good uh, cryptocurrency that could move with big gains against some of these larger cap cryptos. And it has a very big use case at the moment, especially in gaming, NFTs, it's huge. Litten Tree is the, the gamble here. So it's a thousand bucks, but I'm pretty sure I would recoup my thousand dollars if Litten Tree went to zero or I lost it. I think I'm going to get a thousand dollar profit out of this. And then CRO, I think has big potential. I've seen it pump before uh, and it has a, an, an amazing app, has a good use case. So that's my $10,000. Now, if I had $5,000, split these in half. I still think they're pretty reasonable. 500 bucks or 750 into these. Now, if I only have a thousand, I would probably get rid of three of these. Just keep the majors if I don't want to go crazy. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and we want a little gamble. Let's go lit. If we don't want something so speculative, then engine. So I've given you heaps of different ideas and examples for every different person that you are using these questions. So go through, screenshot this if you want and take some time off to ask these questions to yourself and figure out what type of trader or investor you want to be in these markets. Now is a perfect time to be doing this as we are in a dip. We're in a big Bitcoin dip. Maybe altcoin season is over for now. So it's given us some time to figure out our plans. The last thing I want to leave you with is things I wouldn't spend a lot of time on to make big crypto returns. So this is to make the huge returns. If I've bought these and I'm waiting on these to increase in value, then sure, interest earning on these cryptos is great. And you can do that using crypto.com, which I have a link to in the description down below. And also BlockFi, which I also have a link to down there. And you can get up to $250 when you deposit your cryptocurrency with BlockFi, up to $250. So they're the little bonuses to get in. Uh, I also get a kickback and then that's your kickbacks from using those apps. Crypto.com, you can do interest. They have some yield farming stuff over there now and uh, supercharges and other ways to make more money. But I wouldn't be focusing on those to make big returns because they take away time from actually studying and learning about other cryptocurrencies. I think these are all sort of small play long term, there's small play games. Yield farm, of course, you can make a lot of money, but you're going to have to invest a lot of time into that. Staking, NFT games, you're getting five bucks here, 10 bucks there. It's kind of like wasting your time. You should really be focusing on learning a little more about cryptocurrency and probably putting that into your job to make some more cash out of that and then getting some money into your dollar cost averaging position. Like I said, I like buying the dip. This is my portfolio for the 10,000 for the 1,000 Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then a riskier position, say lit or engine. How would I exit these? I have to learn about swing trading. Otherwise, if I have no idea, I would probably look at our X returns. Set that out before you get in. Five X returns, 10 X returns. What is your goal here? What is your end goal? Then use that, write it down, keep a trading journal throughout, and then take your profits. Doesn't matter if the market goes up 10x more, 2x more, whatever it is. You've made a return on your investment, which allows you to then reinvest that again. So that is a way to survive. And I talk about that a lot more in my exit strategy video, which you can probably find after this video in one of the recommended videos. So check that out. And that's how I would take my profits to then swing them back into the market to turn that thousand bucks into 10, that 10 into 100, and of course the 100 into $1 million. So that is quite a detailed what I would do with $1,000. I know I've gone on a little bit there. Uh, I hope you found a lot of value from the questioning and how to question yourself rather than just, here's three, go and buy them. Like, that's not my way. So if you're interested in that, hit me in the subscribes down below. We're nearly at 80,000 subscribers. Let's go for 80,000. 2,000 likes if you found some value from the video. Give us a, give us a like down below. 
uh, bell notification icon. Join me on Instagram for daily Q&A and updates of my retirement fund portfolio. I also have the Investor Accelerator membership. Link to that down below. You can get 15% off at the moment when you sign up with your email address. That's a 12 month membership to learn how to trade and invest with other like-minded people. Check it out, link is down below. That's it for today's video. Catch you guys at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.